Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to do a two-sample t-test for equal variances. So let's say we have this situation. We've got group A results here, and we want to tell if there is a significant difference between response times, these are seconds, for group A and group B. Or is this, is this random or is it uh, not random? So with our hypothesis set, set up, our H0 or H0 hypothesis so H0, if we're saying there is no significant difference between the response times for group A versus group B, the average time of group A should equal the average time of group B. And for the alternative hypothesis for the sample, the average of group A does not equal the average of group B. Now we're going to be using a alpha of 0.05, the 0.05 significance level. Now in Excel, there is a handy feature called the data analysis tool pack where you can perform multiple type of hypothesis testing. So if I bring up my hypothesis test, we see here we have our different t-test, right? So this is going to be a two sample for the equal and unequal. But how do we figure out which one to use? I'm saying that we are going to do this for the equal test, but how do we figure out which one to use? Let's put both of them on here on a worksheet and we'll figure it out which one we should use with the F test. So with the equal variance, we'll just click OK. And uh, I've already got my data here, but let's just reselect my data again. My variable range one is group A here. My variable range two is group B. And I will, I do have labels, group A, group B. My alpha is 0.05. It's a significance level, 0.05. My output range I'll put it in cell, not this cell, let's put it in this cell, F3. Click OK, and click OK, and we have our data here. Now, let's do it for the unequal variances. Data, data analysis, let's select unequal variances, click OK, and our B3 to B15, let's see if this is selected correct, that's right, and this is C3 to C10. I think we had our C3 to C10. Yeah, that's right too. Labels, yes. My output range, we wanted to be an F21. Am I an F21 here? Uh, yep, but let's delete that. This is F21. Click OK. Click OK. And now we have our data. So which one do we use? You'll notice that you know our means, our variances, uh, our observations are the same. But once we get into uh, below that, where we have pool variance and the different numbers here, they vary, right? So how do we figure out which one to use? We're going to use the F-test for that. Now the F-test, the formula for the F-test is basically the larger variance divided by the smaller variance, and we would compare that with the F-critical value. Now the F-critical value, not clow you, the value that we can, we'll take that from an F-table, or there is a formula here where we can figure out the F-critical value. But let's get the output for the F-test. Excel is nice where we also have this data analysis and we have an F-test here. So this does the F-test for two sample for variances. And that's going to help us determine whether or not we should use equal variances or the unequal variances. Click OK. And my range is B13, B3 to B15, range 2, C3 to C10. My, I do have labels, my alpha is 0.05, my output range is going to be J3123, yeah, that's right. Click OK, click OK, and now we have our F test. So we're going to be looking at our F test, our F value. Let's highlight that one and compare that with the one tail test. And the value is below the F critical value, so that means that we are going to use the equal variances. We're saying that these two variances, they are equal. And unequal variances if you have the F value greater than our F critical value. We can also do this here manually if we wanted to do this. So all we need to do is take our variance, the larger variance. It's divided by the smaller variance. And we have our test value, which is the same there. And we have to look up our critical value. So as I mentioned before, there is a function called f inverse rt that will give us our critical value. So we have 
our probability is 0.05. Our degrees of freedom, we know that there are 12 values here and seven values here. So what we need to do is have our degrees of freedom um, each minus one. So 12 minus one is 11. 12 minus, if I go here, 12 minus one is 11, seven minus one is six, so it's 11 and six. Close parentheses, and then we have our F critical value, which is that one, right? 4.02. So that even tells us, if we want to do that manually, that we are going to use equal variances because our F test value is less than our critical value, right? Now, that's all said and done. It's really easy to do this. We have our data, data analysis tool pack. You can Google uh, data analysis tool pack install for Excel, and it'll show you how to install it if you don't have it. And so that just makes it real easy for us to determine which one to use. So now with our equal variances, now we can say, okay, we have our t-stat, that is that, and we're looking at the hypothesis, right? Um, is there a significant difference in the re response times? So that gives us a t-stat from here for equal variances. And this is a two-tail test because we're saying, it, does it equal or does it not equal? And so when we look at our critical two-tail test, let's highlight that, our t-stat is below our critical two-tail test, the value is less than that. So we say that there is uh, no significance difference, right? So the average of A uh, for that sample and the average of B for that sample, uh, we don't reject the null hypothesis. So we're saying that uh, this sample versus that sample, it's random. There's no significant difference in response times. Now, if we didn't have the data analysis tool pack or if we wanted to be a little challenge and wanted to do this with formulas and functions in Excel, we could do that. So the formulas to do that are here. This is, will figure out our variance. This is gonna figure out our T value. And we just need to plug those in. So we're gonna do the, the denominator first and then the denominator for our variance here. Okay, hey, I'm, I'm just gonna take the values here from the F test here. So we're gonna take the uh, number of observations, that minus one, and then close parentheses, multiply by the, uh, var the variance of the first value. So that's this gonna be this value, K7. And close parentheses plus the observations of our second group, minus one, close parentheses, whoops. And then we're gonna multiply that by the Variance here for group two, close parentheses, press enter. Let's see, there's a problem with the formula. I probably needed to add another parentheses. I think I needed to add one here to close that off and to add one here to close this off. Press enter. Yep, so I have my value of 7584. That's for the numerator. For my, Let's move this a little bit. I think this is in the way. And we'll move this up a little bit. Let's see. All right. So for my denominator here, it, so that's going to be basically my degrees of freedom here, right? Or 12 minus 1 plus 7 minus 1. So I'm just even going to use this equals to that, that value plus that value is degrees of freedom. Group A is degrees of freedom plus Group B is degrees of freedom, press enter, and that gives us 17. And so now I have my S squared here, which is my numerator divided by my denominator, which is L24, press enter, and we have, and we have 446.12 when we round that off. Now we're gonna have to plug my output here into the formula down here for my uh, T value, my test value here. So the, denomin the, numerator, the numerator here, and it's going to be the mean minus of group A minus the mean of group B. Press enter, which gives me 19. And my denominator is going to be basically the square root of this, because this is squared. So that's going to be the square root, open parentheses of my value here, my variance here, and I have to multiply that by this. 
1 over the uh, observations of group A plus the 1 over the observations of group B. So let's put the square root function in there. Open parentheses. I think I need to have two open parentheses. 1 divided by n1, which is my observation here. All right, and then we're going to add 1 over the observation of group B. Close parentheses. Uh, close that parentheses. Press enter. It's going to be 10.04. My t value, of course, is going to be my numerator divided by my denominator, which is L28. Press enter. And that gives us 1.89. Coincidentally, 1.89 is the same here. 1.89143637. To find my t critical value, that's going to be the t inverse function. This is a two-tail test because we're doing equal or non-equal. Click on that. My probability is 0.05. And, and my degrees of freedom is going to be 17. Uh, basically, it's 12 minus 1, which is 11, plus 7 minus 1, which is 6, right? So that's 17. And press enter, and we have our critical value of 2.109. And this also tells us, let me highlight that one. This also tells us that my t, my test value, is less than my critical value, so I do not reject my no hypothesis. So that's the way that we can do a two-sample t-test for equal variances. One using the data analysis toolback, which is really super easy, and, or not super easy, but maybe super fast. And the other one, if you want to get a little bit more challenged, is to use the functions in Excel to figure out what the formula is. Either way, you'll also still need to figure out if you got this group of values, if you need to take the values for the equal variances or non-equal variances, and that's using the F test. And we also have our manual way to figure out the F value versus the critical value. So here's our two sample t-test for equal variances. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching.